Inside this trailer is the cheapest Orange County chopper ever sold. And it is either the worst financial decision of my life or the greatest investment I've ever made. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, Sean, but why? Well, let me explain. In the 2000s, Orange County Choppers was huge and made the only six-figure motorcycles that I knew about. So three years ago, I wanted to see if they lived up to the hype, and it didn't. It was cheap, uncomfortable, and underpowered. So I doubled the horsepower with an engine swap and did the most logical next thing. But then I realized that maybe I never gave Orange County Choppers a fair shake because the bike that I had was a really cheap giveaway bike. I needed to buy one of their customer bikes, one of their specialty builds, one that they spent a lot of money, time, and energy doing. And I know it took me years to find it, but I'm serious when I say that I found the second coolest Orange County Chopper ever built. Plan simple. One, see if we can get this thing running. It's been sitting for over five years. Two, I'm gonna ride. According to my knowledge, only one other person ever rode it. And then three, to answer the biggest question of all. How much horsepower does the supercharged Orange County Chopper make? Oh man! So this is the Orange County Chopper Miss Geico bike, and it's it's got to be one of the coolest bikes OCC ever made, and actually one of the one of their most recent bikes. It was made in 2018, kind of after the big OCC thing kind of blew up. This is incredible. Also, as far as I know, this thing has not ran in five years. This is not a, this is not wheels or nothing like that. This is just, this bike lived on this platform, but I don't know how they got the platform inside the trailer. Now the seller told me this thing had two surprise gifts along with it. That, I think, is one of them. <laughs> check this out. This, holy cow, check this out. You guys might know more about this than I do, but this is a uh, Miss Geico. I don't know what Miss Geico is, but they had a racing boat. And the race boat looked like this. It's in, this in the past couple years, they stopped doing it. Check it out, this is huge. And it weighs a, a, it's so heavy. So whatever this is worth, this came with the bike. That is cool, let me, uh, let me put this on one of those blankets and let's try to move this into the, you mind helping me? Let's put it on top of this thing. So then I had my first real dilemma. I need to figure out how to get this thing out of the trailer and off the platform. And the best idea I came up with was tank straps plus East Coast banana equals easy. So possibly the first time in five years, the beautiful Miss Geico bike saw daylight and gracefully glided across the asphalt in true Orange County chopper fashion. And then something happened that even in my wildest dreams, I could not have expected. Where did you move that picker up? Colorado. Who had it? Was it a private collector or was it still from Gary? Um, the guy who they built it for. The guy who owned, uh, he had some ownership in uh, Miss Geico Racing. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> you know him. Uh -huh. he, he died, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's just. this whole thing. Was it, was they say what? I did all of this. What do you mean? I did all that. The supercharger, the tune, I did all of it. You did this? Yeah. I thought Orange County Chopper did it. What did Orange County Chopper do? They just did the bike. They built the bike. You put this on here? Yeah. You're kidding me. I swear to God. That's freaking crazy. So you're telling me that out of how many billion people in, this, in the world, the one guy that actually really built this thing that knows a lot about this bike is two doors down from me. <laughs> how is that? Alex? Almost like... Everything has a purpose and a reason. That is crazy. Can you, so when, when, when did you, this is 2018, right? So I did this back in. This was done in 16? Yeah. Holy cow, I yeah. thought it was 18. So you could tell me more about this bike then. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm probably one of the only people that's ever ridden this bike. You rode it. Huh? Was this, that's, <laughs> the supercharger was touching your chest. You wanna know what I paid for this thing? Hopefully not more than 15. $10,000. Yes. $10,000 for the trailer, the chopper, that awesome boat, and there's a mystery box that the owner told me like a, a week after I got it. He's like, hey, did you see the mystery box? Which I've still not opened up yet. To put this in the context, when this bike was originally built, it was valued at over $140,000. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. That ain't bad. I'll give you 15 for it right now. Are you serious? I swear to God. Let me, let me, Not let me think about it. I will give you 15 for it right now. I'll go home and get you cash and hand it to you. Let, let, take this and roll it right next door just so I can have it back. 
I, I will consider that. All right. I, I need. A, I, I, I want the little boat. You can have the. Little all right. Boat. <laughs> I, I need to get it running. I'm gonna ride it. Yeah. I'm gonna ride it. You're gonna ride it as far as like one loop and be like, I'm done. <laughs> you, you might be right. And then I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go put it. Take it. I'll take it to the dyno tomorrow. So the last time that I had this. Um. So Paul Senior is a really good friend of mine. Okay. And his wife Joni, we go way back. So when I was down in Palm Beach before I moved up here, right? You know that whole story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they used to send me all their bikes to tune them and really the actual like rideability of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's so, like, insane. Every one of bikes, like the paintball bike, Miss Geico bike, the um, the Senior Series, like mini choppers, bobbers that were going out. Dude, I did like all the custom stitching and everything for them. That's crazy. Yeah. And and um, I'm trying to. What are up. the odds, dude? That's I haven't seen this thing in probably eight years. And I saw the trailer and I was like, "There's no way that bike is gonna be sitting inside of that trailer." I've seen that video. That's the only video of anyone ever riding the yeah. bike, isn't it? Yeah. And that's you on there. Yeah. That's my shop down in Palm Beach. How fast? How fast did you get it going? That's crazy. I saw that video. I, I had no idea it was you. Yeah. Dude, that was it. I literally like took that thing three blocks and I was like, I'm done. I'm not riding this thing anymore. Yeah, it, it, everything about it. I mean, you fit it great. Look, you're, you're, you're four inches from the oh, supercharger. Yeah. yeah. Your, your arm is basically resting on the belt. Yeah. How much boost are you hitting? Dude, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. Do you, have, do you have any, do you have any guess of what kind of horsepower it makes? What, what, what's the, what engine is this? Um, so this was right at. I saw 113. I'm like, oh, it's a 113. But no, yeah, 113 was uh, the Geico was, racing. Um, say the only dyno that this thing had was like 197 horsepower it was stupid 197 yeah. horsepower it went in the bike and was actually like tuned in the bike yeah no way yeah yeah 197 horsepower that's before they put it on the bike and before they tuned it 197 horsepower is nuts that's getting really close to like turbo road king type of power to, to put this in the context the last orange county chopper bike that i owned had like 58 horsepower. So that thing is not, there's no way. We're gonna, we're gonna, we'll find out. And what's even more nuts is the only video I ever saw of anyone riding this bike, I go back and look at it, it ends up being him. It was his, it was his video, he posted it. Then he continues and gives me a wealth of information about this motorcycle, stuff that I would, probably would have spent hours and hours trying to figure out with a mechanic, just because if you don't know, you don't know, in including the crazy ignition system that this bike has. So th this runs off a C18. Yeah. That is it. Dude, if you don't have anything in it up to that level, not gonna run great. Okay, so I gotta get some, I, I, I might have some. Pure grade. What about C16? You can run on that, that's fine. Cause I think I have a bunch of that. Yeah. Okay. That, that's on my road case. Anything that's like on. 110 and up, you'll be okay. Okay. It's not like you're going to go and run full throttle pulls on this thing. Trust me, you can't. You so, you'll be able to hold on. So, what uh, what engine is this? If I recall, it was like a 131. Okay. If I recall correctly, I'll go back and look at the specs on it. Did you build all the brackets to mount and everything yeah. like that? Yeah. What? Yeah. That is insane. Yeah. This thing is nuts, dude. I mean, literally, dude, like quarter throttle, you slide right off the back of that thing. Well, yeah, because like, there's, there's no seat. There, and then there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing. At least it has this. The battery sits down inside of here. That's pro I guarantee you that's probably the battery that I put in on the side of the road. Really? I'm willing to bet money, dude. Yeah, because no, no one else wants to drive the I thing. I guarantee it, yeah. yeah. Battery here, starter here, just push button. Oh, okay, so that's how you start it. Yep, just push button, direct drive on the side. Yep, there you go. That battery's not dead. Not dead. What? Now let me tell you, dude. This thing takes some serious voltage to crank. So yeah. Like you're gonna get two or three cranks out of a charged battery, and that's it. That's all you're getting. Because it's such high compression. Yeah. You know, you know what the compression ratio was on it. Dude, it's stupid high. Stupid high. I have no idea what internally they did to it when they built the motor. Now, why would they want a high compression motor with boosted? You wouldn't. You wouldn't. wouldn't. No, you normally want lower compression. You want low compression for the increased boost. Yeah. Yeah. But it, dude, it's built strong. All right, so I got to make sure it's got the right fuel in it. Fuel for sure. I can smell that it's already bad what's in there, so drain what you can. Okay. Is this carburetor or fuel injected? It's uh, fuel injected. And is, is, that, is that the, what is that thing down there? That's your ignition. It's fit, okay. Is there, a, um, is there a decompression? It's automatic compression releases in the heads. Oh, okay. They're down inside of here. It's right here. You can hear me clicking on one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So they're automatic, so all you have to do is just once you crank the bike over, they're down, and then once the motor fires up and it's got compression, it'll push them up to seal the heads. Oh, okay. I'm excited to get this thing on. Now, what's this thing over here? 
Oh, is this end? Um, so no. this is for your actual ignition to turn the bike on and off. So you can hear, you hear coils and stuff turn on and off. Oh, okay. So you pull, let me see, if I recall, you pull and turn. Was it a pull and quarter turn? Oh, the clip's missing. Where is it? There's an orange uh, race clip, like when you get on a jet ski. Oh, uh, no, I don't think I ever got like that. Like the red coil. Yeah, that's it. I, I would have just thrown that away. Yeah. Somebody's changed it. This was red. It was like a uh, one of the bright orange ones, you know? Yeah, yeah. If you pull this one out, you hear everything turn on. Yeah. And you clip this in. That's how the bike stays running. What? So, that, like, right now you have ignition and all your fuel system, everything's on. And then you plug that to your boot. You just hook this wherever you want. So to. when you inevitably fly off the bike... The bike will at least <laughs> shut off, yeah. The bike will shut off. Yeah. That's safety right there. Yeah. Safety first. Now, most dealerships want nothing to do with these custom motorcycles, especially Orange County Choppers. However, my buddy Dave is all about it. He knows what he's doing. So let's see what we gotta do to get this thing running. Let's see if I got anything. BP Race Fuel is what champions drink. Don't drink BP Race Fuel. What up, Dave? Oh, what up, Sean? What's up, Dave? Oh, wow. We got here the uh, Miss Geico. Oh, it's not gonna fit that ramp. <laughs> Dragging on there. Do you know how long it's been since it's, it, it, it was even started? probably like five years. The first step is to drain out all the fuel so we can put good fuel inside of it. Then check the bike's oil, then make sure the battery has enough power to crank over this pretty powerful engine. The guy who helped build it told me that you only have a few cranks before that just kills the battery. So we have to start with a really strong battery. And then we had our first well, problem. Like we got our first uh, fairly big problem. That's the fuel line right there. And it kind of uh, disintegrated, melted. So right now I, I got most of the fuel out the fuel line from the fuel tank to the engine was just disintegrated. We finally got that off. Now the crossover line that goes between the two different halves of the tank, that's gonna have the exact, pretty much the same problem. It's really, really soft. So either we, we, we replace it now, or it fails when uh, we don't want it to fail. Yeah, I, I'd rather replace it now than, than have gas dump all over, the, all over us when we're trying to go down the road or exactly. on the dyno. So here's the issue. This is a, a clutch hydraulic, it's a hydraulic clutch. If this fails while you're driving and it's in gear and something crazy happens, you cannot disengage the engine from the, from the wheels. Incredibly dangerous. Anything's going to work while this thing's running, it's this. This is almost more important than the brakes, to be honest with you. That purple stuff. If I let this thing go down the whole way, we have to do it all over again. Because in another air bubble, more air got caught up in there. The job was the filler, is to make sure it's always topped off. This bike's pretty much as simple as it gets. There's no, there's no key, there's no on and off. There's this. Off, on. And then you put this little pin in there. You tie this pin to your boot. And when you fall off the bike, it kills the bike. This is safety. And then we're ready to try to start it. Well, that didn't do anything we wanted it to do. So problem number one, the starter button got stuck and it, it you're right, it was, about, it was longer than I thought though. It was more than one crank. It was probably a good like, what, 10 seconds of cranking. Yeah. But that was pretty, uh, that got that battery down pretty good. Sounds like. The starter stripped the strip gear. Yep. Spread clutch just took a crap. Well, I'm beginning to wonder is there something majorly wrong with this bike? 
that I don't know about. Is this thing gonna be a giant money pit? <laughs> so it ran off the starter fluid. Yeah. <laughs> That's good news. I thought it would have ran a little bit longer. So when, when we put starter fluid in there, it'll run, it'll pop off for a couple seconds, which means we're getting spark, which means we're not getting fuel. So we're gonna put a, uh, we're gonna test the uh, fuel pressure, which if we have bad fuel pressure, then I'd say the most likely culprit is a fuel pump. Is that, is that for- Is that uh, for something, you know, like fandangled? That might be, that might be something needed for starting. That's what I mean, like. Yeah, let's, uh, let's press that button. Oh. Is that white? There's a little light up here. Pretty clean looking job These for a guys custom. These did a really good job. I, I, you know what, man? I've been in the industry. You've, I've seen some, you, know, you think, oh, dude, I loved when that dude built that. Or, right, and then you see and it. And then you see it and you're like, really? He never finished he it. He not do this. Like, right. Like, but this is complete, man. This, they did a... Bang up job on this. What's the best case scenario here? We want to find that the pump, that the power is going to the pump. We want to make sure that the pump is getting power. We want to make sure that, because if the pump's not getting power, we, it could be anything. It could be ACU. So we checked the fuel pump pressure and it had no pressure. We also realized that we never heard the fuel pump cycle on. So we're pretty sure that's bad. So we took the old fuel pump and replaced it with a new one. There we go. Uh, there we go. Finally. All right. So that does not look like a big issue as far as... So this is the fuel pump. It's supposed to be bad. It's supposed to be bad. We think it's bad. I thought, hey, let's throw, let's throw 12 volts up to it. I, don't, I want to see what it does. Nothing. Nothing. Super dead. Yeah, she's, she's dead, dead. We've been pretty blessed all day. God's been looking out for us with this project. Well, you might even have a fuel pump. That's, we'll see. But that was the problem. All we have to do is wire it back up and this thing should fire up. This thing should run on its own. And all the fun we're having with this chopper reminds me of one of my favorite Bible verses, Colossians 3.13. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. All right, this is a big moment. Just when I thought this was gonna start, this happened. Whoa, 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 whoa. We just blew a fuel line. One of the fuel injectors. Oh, like, shoot. Did the fuel injector pop out? When the fuel system got pressure, as soon as it got enough pressure, it blew that line out. Before it even got fuel up to here. Not the easiest line to get to, is oh, it? Oh, no, it's not. And that's what I'm... You're going to have to take the belts off. This is all going to have to come off. Because this whole thing's got to come off. So now we got to pull the supercharger off. And now we're getting into this bike much more than we thought. Potentially another reason why you don't want to buy an Orange County chopper. We have not seen it run. We've not seen it do anything. And now we got to have that everything on top of that engine. Uh, the whole supercharger, the whole supercharger has to come off. Supercharger, belt, coolies, everything for us to change the one fuel line. Before you say it, I hate to be continued videos, but we kind of had to do it. There's still a mystery box in there that I forgot all about. Let's go see what it is. Mm. Edox. Edox, I don't know what that, Edox, Edox, I don't know how to say that, but it's something. Edox Racing, Mater, 
Mater or law. I don't know what any of these things say. Less jeevness. I don't know what any I don't know what any of these words are. The same thing. Cool looking box, alright. Instruction manual. Oh, that's heavy. What is this? It's just part of the box, okay. Alright. Box Miss Guy Code Limited Edition. It's got its own little watch band, a couple of watch bands, two watch bands, and wow. Get off of there. Well, I guess I'll take it off. I don't want to ruin it, but. Look at that. Adox Miss Geico Racing. Is it still, is it work? No, it's stopped. Swiss made. Wow. What a, what a cool watch. So I guess this was made for the, for when they built the race team. That is cool. Let me put that back. That's a pretty cool uh, secret gift. So I did talk to, I went back over there and talked to the guy who worked on the bike. I told him, I told him where we're at, I told him where we're going on with it. And he's like, he's like, yeah, to be honest, man, I don't, that, that bike was never dialed in. It never ran right. Mark my word. We will get that bike running right. I will get it running right. I will drive it more than go around the block, and we will get it on the dyno. It's going to be a lot of fun next week or next week. Soon, it's going to be awesome. We'll see you guys later.